Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today we're asking, how and why do cats purr? Easy, it's because they're happy that humans are doing their bidding. Not so fast. Like a purring cat, this question seems simple at first. But when you spend a little more time with it, it reveals a deep challenge. Can we ever understand cats? We're about to investigate. Today's question comes from Reed. Hi, my name is Reed and I'm 12 years old. My question is, how and why do cats purr? Well, I think the why is easy. It's just they found a wonderful lap. Found a wonderful lap? Like, yeah, just to like, sit? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like when you press an electrical switch, the cat finds a lap and suddenly a purr is produced. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask our listeners, why do you think cats purr and how do they do it? Think about it, because we'll be back to begin our investigation. So when Reed first sent us this question, I thought it would be fun and easy to answer. Like, I'll just find a scientist who studies cat purrs and ask them to tell me what they know. Which is, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we do here. <laughs> and it nearly always works. But after months of research, I had hit a lot of dead cat ends. Well, that's where curiosity takes you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It turns out that very few people actually study cat purrs. Well, that's weird. Why? I don't know. I added that to my list of questions, and I decided to start with Gary Weitzman, a former veterinarian who wrote a book about decoding cat language. So I figured he would have some solid answers about purrs. Yeah, we don't know anything about cats, it seems sometimes. That's not entirely true, but boy, they are still mysterious. Wait, how can we not know anything about cats? Like, they're right there in our house. Like, sometimes dozens of them. <laughs> Hopefully not dozens. Gary told me cats are totally confounding to science. They still boggle us because they do things that just don't make a lot of sense. So purring is a really great example. Lots of animals make noises to communicate to each other. Cats, not so much. Most cats will only vocalize to humans. Once they're not kittens anymore, they only vocalize to people because they usually want something. So outside of saying, get away from that tuna can, bucko, or you'll see the wrong side of my claw, cats don't really have much to say to each other. <laughs> For the most part. And every time I say that, I always get a call from someone that says that her cat meows to other cats. And that's a possibility, but it's much less frequent than when they meow to humans. Humans are on the receiving end of most feline conversation. And most people assume that meowing means I want something and purring means I'm happy, keep petting me. Which is sort of just another way to say you want something. Exactly. But as a veterinarian... Gary observed something that forced him to question those assumptions. Sometimes we would hear cats purring if they were in a cage in a hospital because they were waiting for a procedure or something else. And that didn't make any sense to me because nobody likes that. That is really weird. I mean, cats famously hate the vet. So why would they be purring there, especially while they're waiting for something terrifying? We do not know. But that observation points to the fact that there's more to a purr than meets the ear. There's a whole lot out there that's suggesting that they purr for a lot of reasons. The majority that we seem to understand the best is when they're happy and content. But it can also mean that they're scared, that they're nervous, that they're anxious, that they're tired. Well, that's one sound that's like really covering a wide range of emotions there. But did he have any answers about how cats purr? Well, he knew the basics. It comes from their vocal cords and it comes from their throat. That seems pretty obvious. Like, uh, most animals do use their voice boxes to communicate. I think that's what they're for. But why do purrs sound so different from other animal sounds? Right. I wanted to keep digging into that question and all the others that Gary opened up. Like? Why do some cats purr and some cats don't? And unrelated to purring, but equally frustrating. Why on earth would cats need to bat things off of a table? Why? <laughs> it's only to let us know uh, where we are in the evolutionary chain. It, that's really true. We are their servants. That's it. 
basically by moving our things out of their place, they're putting humans in our place. <laughs> exactly. As their servants. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I have to say that my interview with Gary left me with more questions than answers. So I decided to keep on my search across the ocean to a professor named Karen McComb. I study animal communication and animal minds. Karen mostly studies how animals like elephants and lions communicate in the wild. But it was an animal in her own home who inspired her to look into cat purrs. What happened was that every morning my own cat would start doing this purring while I was lying in bed and he'd, he'd sort of sit up really close to me. The cat, whose name was Peppo, would jump into Karen's bed as she slept, get close, and then start purring. A loud, insistent purr. And he wouldn't stop until Karen got out of bed. You find that you were getting up on his command and going downstairs and feeding him because you couldn't relax, really, just lying there with this going on. That sounds awful. She really is her cat's slave. <laughs> right. So Karen did not enjoy this, and she decided to do something about it. Like lock her door? No. Study Peppo. I decided that I was going to find out why that purring was so difficult to ignore and why he was able to get me out of bed like that. That'll show Peppo just published that paper. <laughs> She'll silence him with science. But before we find out how our plan went, I asked Karen if she knew more about how cats purr. They purr in a really unusual way because they've got this funny way of actually vibrating the muscles in their voice box. Cats expand and contract the muscles within their voice box or larynx as they breathe in and out. And that gives them a really, really low pitched purr, which is much lower than it should be. Sound-wise, the purr matches a much, much bigger animal. So the purr actually has a pitch that's the same as an elephant rumble. Well, that's insane. Like, little tiny, like, five-pound cat can uh, rumble in the same frequency range as an elephant that weighs, like, thousands of pounds. Yeah, they're ready to rumble. And Karen would know because she's actually studied the elephant rumble. You can hear for yourself. Here's the cat purr. And here's the elephant rumble. Well, you know, I wouldn't have expected that an elephant rumble sounds so much like a purr. I know. It's really weird. So compared to recording elephant rumbles, Karen felt like studying Peppo's purr would be a cinch. Because I worked on animal communication, I had all the microphones and tape recorders, all the equipment that I needed to do a study on it. Karen started by asking around to find out if other cats also woke their owners up with insistent purring. And some did. These people that I talked to had these cats also find that they couldn't ignore it and they had to get up and go and feed the cats. Man, so there's just like a group of cats who are in on it, like... Listen, listen, buddy. This works. I swear. You, you, you go, you purr, they get you the food. That's how it works. <laughs> Karen found 10 other cats to join Peppo for the study. She handed out her recording equipment and had the owners record the cat's insistent morning purr and also their regular relaxed purr. Karen played those two types of purrs to other humans to listen and rate them. And they had to write down which they thought was more urgent of the pair and which was more pleasant. They also had to decide which of all the cat purrs was the most urgent and the most pleasant. So I'm assuming we have these recordings and we can hear them. Yes. Let's see if you and our listeners can tell which is the morning purr and which is the relaxed purr. Here's the first. And here's the second. Oh, 
I gotta say, one of those sounds like angry, like I'm about <laughs> to get attacked. <laughs> so I'm gonna guess that that one, the second one, is the one. The is, morning purr. It, yeah, that's the one where he's asking for food. You're right. And putting together all of the human rankings, Karen found something surprising. What we found out, which was quite amazing, was that the purrs that had been rated as the most urgent and the least pleasant, they had a very high frequency, a high-pitched element in them. This pitch is very similar to something else that we're already tuned to respond to. They are sort of triggering a response in humans that is usually triggered by a baby cry where you rush to try and give care to the baby and they want you to rush to give care to them and in particular, you know, put their foot out. So, so cats are copying babies. <laughs> yes, they are seriously geniuses at manipulating us. <laughs> Indeed they are. <laughs> And this led Karen to a discovery about how cats make purrs with different pitches. They are able to both do the vibration bit with their muscles, but then also force air over their vocal cords. So they're doing the two things simultaneously, one to give a low pitch and one to give a higher pitch. So cats have like a perfect pitch? Yes. They can use their purring muscles in different ways to make different pitches and say different things. It's worth listening to purrs because sometimes there's more to them than you might think at first. Oh, so cats purr when they're happy. They purr when they're nervous. They purr to get us to care for them. Basically, domestic cats purr to control, I mean, communicate with humans. So, so are we done? Is the investigation closed? Uh, not even close. You can't finish an investigation on cat purring without going to the premier cat purr research website, purring.org. Wait, purring.org? That's a thing? Yes, it is. When I landed on this website on my internet searchings, I knew I had to talk to the person behind it. Because right on the front page, he's got an awesome video of himself petting and recording a purring cheetah with a microphone. Here's what it sounds like. Wait, cheetahs also purr like house cats? I thought these purrs existed so that they could manipulate humans, not, like, move really fast on the savannah. <laughs> right. I mean, I had so many questions. Purring.org is run by Robert Eklund. He's a professor of language and culture in Sweden, and I talked to him over Zoom. Okay, I think we're ready to start. Okay, go ahead. Uh, now I look kind of paid. <laughs> Robert began by telling me that before he became an expert on purrs, he mostly studied how people breathe while they talk. That's a very specific topic. <laughs> it is. And he discovered cats breathe while they talk, too. You can listen to any cat and you can look at the rib cage and you will see it sort of go <laughs> when they exhale or inhale on purring. Okay, so there's like an inhale per noise and then an exhale per noise. Yeah, that's how they do it without stopping. And that was interesting to Robert. He's also just really into cats. Then I started reading up on uh, cats because I'm a cat person. And a few years later, me and my girlfriend went to South Africa to work with cheetahs as volunteers. Yeah, so that's how he ended up next to a cheetah with a mic in his hand. Yes, this cheetah's name was Cain. He was huge, uh, actually big, bigger than cheetahs are supposed to be, and he was constantly purring. Wait, is, it, is it weird that cheetahs purr? Yeah, it kind of is, because most big cats don't purr. The five biggest cats, tigers, lions, jaguars, and leopards, they can't purr, but they can roar instead. So cats either roar or they purr, and all the other 32 33 breeds of cats. They can purr, but they can't roar. And the jury is sort of out on snow leopards. So while we wait for that snow leopard verdict, we can say that cats are all either roarers or they're purrers. Yes, exactly. Cheetahs are coming down on the side of purring, even though you'll think they'll be team roar. Cheetahs are the most prolific purrers of them all. They purr like crazy. 
Robert told me you could hear cane purring from 50 meters away, and he felt the ground actually shake as he laid next to him recording. That's a pretty incredibly powerful purr. Yeah. Robert took these recordings back to Sweden with him, and he compared them to recordings of his girlfriend's cat. He found that despite the cheetah being the much bigger animal... The pitch at which they were purring was basically the same. So there's that pitch trick again. So it doesn't matter how big you are, you can get that low frequency. (laughs) Right. It seems like no matter how big the cat, the purring equipment is the same in function, if not in size. That's so crazy. But what about roaring cats? They must have some sort of like different thing going on, right? (laughs) If being able to roar makes you unable to purr. Some scientists say that the difference between roaring and purring cats is one bone in their throat. But Robert's not convinced. In fact, he's not convinced we know anything about how cats purr because there's no way to see inside a cat as it purrs. So no one really knows how purring or roaring is done, especially not purring, which is also fascinating because we've been living with them for 10,000 years. We love their purring. The scientists are doing all kinds of crazy stuff to find out things, but no one knows exactly how purring is done. So he's saying we don't know anything? Like we're just back to the drawing board? He's saying that scientists definitely don't agree about how cats purr. I know people who are convinced that they know how cats purr. The thing is that other world experts don't agree, (laughs) which is how science works. I guess he's one of the experts that doesn't agree. Scientists need to be convinced by evidence. That's part of the process of science. And the thing is, it's really, really hard to get evidence from cats. Cats are notoriously not cooperative, (laughs) which is why we love them. (laughs) If humans were purring, we would definitely know how we do it. But uh, cats, no. (laughs) It's like the science equivalent of a cat batting your things off the table. (laughs) This investigation has had its frustrating moments, but also, like cats, it's also been full of interesting surprises. And hairballs. No hairballs. But I think we've learned that even the simplest of questions can reveal the deep mysteries and limitations of science. And that cats are maybe even better at manipulating us than we thought. So maybe one day they'll decide to tell us why and how they purr. But only if they feel like it. Do you have a cat or know a cat? Take a closer listen to their purrs. Can you hear if they have different pitches in their purrs in different circumstances? Try recording their purrs by taking a video or an audio recording. Then listen back and see if you can hear the difference. Send us those perfect recordings and any other pet questions at tumblepodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear them. Thanks today to all of our excellent guests, Dr. Gary Weitzman, president of the San Diego Humane Society, Dr. Karen McComb, emeritus professor of animal behavior and cognition at the University of Sussex, Dr. Robert Eklund, associate professor of language, culture, and phonetics at Lean Shopping University. And also thanks to Reed for sending in his perplexing and awesome question. Want to learn more about cat purrs? Listen to our special bonus interview episode available to patrons who pledge just $1 or more a month on an exclusive ad-free podcast feed. Just go to patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. You'll also find the video of Robert with the cheetah on the blog on our website, sciencepodcastforkids.com, along with other cat purr information we discovered in the course of our investigation. Sarah Robertson Lentz edited this episode and made the episode art. Eric Kuhn is our engineer and mixer. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote this episode. And I'm Marsh Lescamilla, and I made all of the music. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more stories of science discovery.